traveling. That's going to be a traveling call against Rainer Schein. Able to attack the basket again and saw Rico Meyerhofer in front of him. Probably didn't want to get a shot blocked by the young athletic big man and shuffled his feet there a little bit. Again, that's good help defense, though, mm -hmm. really, Rico putting himself in position to help cause that turnover. Well, two legitimate shot blockers on the floor now for b makes every ace with Rocky Rivas and Meyerhofer playing together. Out to Roger Yacht. J.R. Reyes getting his arm around Rafi, getting called for a foul, a hold off the ball there. There's a look at his right arm and his left arm. Clear foul on J.R. Reyes. That's going to be his second. Roger Yap. Going to get Gabe Norwood on the hand check, I guess. Keeping his hand on Roger Yap during the drive. Now Raider Shine going to go a little bit big with Saul Mercado, Eddie Lowry, Raiden. Uh, Jeff, no, Gabe Norwood, uh, Rod Neely, and J.R. Reyes. James Yap. Oh, jeez. James Just a nice, long, slow stride. So under control. James just seems to never be rattled. Seven quiet points for the 2006 MVP. Rod Neely. As the Elastic Painters continue to struggle on their transition plays. There's the drop from Meyerhofer. Meyerhofer almost losing it. He bounces it back in, straight into the hands of the Alaska Painters. Norwood inside to Neely. Neely hangs and scores. Well, that pass is set up by a tremendous ball fake by Gabe Norwood, faking the pass around the, the waist of, of Roger Yap there. It was just a nice play in transition. 12 point ball game, 5 minutes and 11 still remaining in the half. Roger Yup, walking the tightrope there, wash him with an easy two. The penetration sets up his import for an easy basket. Laure. Perimeter shooting has just been absent now for the Rainer Shine Alaska Painters. Well, and if you notice, they're showing hard on the ball screen, meaning the defender of the ball screen is really committing to help on Solomon Mercado to make him give up the ball. And it looks like b -Meg is trying to take that risk of giving up the jump shots to Lowry and Jervy Cruz early on. Frustrating second quarter for J.R. Reyes, who's just picked up his third personal. We saw in the interview that we showed uh, that Kaloy was saying his team got rattled in game three, but they didn't give up and they came out and played. And it looks like right now they're, they're struggling a bit again. Let's see if that intestinal fort fortitude that they mm -hmm. showed in game three reemerges. Great pass inside to wash him, just couldn't finish. Neely against Washam. Moves in, spins, drops. Six seconds left on the clock here. That's still alive. And Son Mercado unable to score from the outside. Two on one. Meyerhofer oh! with a slam. <laughs> Meyerhofer owning that slam against Gabe Norwood. And not very often does Gabe Norwood be on the... Now it's seldom that he's on the other end of the poster. Getting dunked on himself, <laughs> yeah. Payback for a lot of the players in the PBA. Every guy that Dave Norwood has ever dunked on just cheered <laughs> <laughs> on that play. And with four minutes and eight still remaining in the second quarter, it is a 16-point lead for the BMAC Derby. Ace Gemados will be right back. We return to the Cuneta Astrodome where the BMAC Derby Estimado fans are just starting to calm down after that last highlight from Rico <laughs> Meyerhofer, which we'll revisit right now in the Yakult Slam Dunk. Let me tell you this, when every, every time we bring up the uh, Slam Dunk, 
Best Dave Norwood finishing there, but look at this. This time he's on the receiving end of Rico Meyerhofer. And he jumped. Gabe jumped, but then he didn't want to be in the poster, so he realized Rico's up too high. He put his hands down to try to get out, but too late. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> so the young Rico Meyerhofer has played his role well for BMEG Derby Ace and more. And he's held the Yamadas now stay ahead by 16, their biggest lead of the ball game. See the assist. Rainer Schein was only three assists to Derby, BMEG Derby Ace's 11. Way back open for three, yes. Well, that's just a really well executed play coming out of the timeout, getting one of the best open three point shooters to Mike Rayback, a wide open look off of a lot of movement. Can Meyer Hoffer answer back on the other end? Not this time. Well, he deserves to get, to get a try for what he's been playing great. Mercado will try to set this one up for Rainer Shine. The double team on Neely for three. Nearly short. Rebound by Meyerhofer. Well, it's a tremendous hustle from Rafi Rivas. After he trapped the ball screen, he sprinted back to get a hand up and challenge that three from Rod Neely. A little stop and go here with Roger Yap. That's going to be an offensive foul. Eddie Lauer really does a great job defensively on the weak side, stepping in and drawing charges a lot. I think he's, if you would have a stat of charges taken per minutes played, mm -hmm. he's got to be top five. And maybe number one. Approaching the three-minute mark of the second quarter, Alaska Painter still looking for an answer, looking for a go-to guy. Norwood to Rayback, Rod Neely. Rayback, back-to-back oh. -back threes from number 41. Well, he's got it going. He's a nice addition to this team because he's so good at those, that what he did right there, knocking down open threes off of penetration. 30-second timeout now brought to you by Handy Fix and first aid and by Mo Bonds all, seals all. And uh, B. McDerby Ace hoping to stop the momentum with this timeout. Two guys in the PBA who are very similar, who are big men who are very tall. Mike Rayback at 6'7 and Nick Canisi at 6'9. Neither of them great post players. That's a good comparison, you're very right. Very smart players, solid defenders, and great shooters on open spot-up threes. And uh, strangely enough, those are actually the first three-point attempts of Mike Rayback in this series. Well, we'll see James Yap getting uh, attended to over there. Looks like he got a little... Uh, well, that's probably, I think him and Saul accidentally butted heads on a loose ball. Yeah, there was a definitely contact there. Just uh, James yeah, being treated now by the BMAC Derby Ace uh, medical staff. Well, that was earlier. He's back in now. Watch him against Mercado. And here's Sean staying in that zone. James Yap. Yeah. See the quickness of Mercado being able to put pressure on Yap out there, and you see the face of Saul trying to pressure James. Close to the reach in a little bit. Another headbutt again. These guys are becoming very close this series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the but the officials are <laughs> calling it a push, and so it's back to rain or shine. Again, a lot of standing around here to start this possession from Rainer Shine. Gabe Norwood has had this possession for a while. They go to Laure. Baseline two blocked by Washam. Another great defensive possession from BMAG. Well, James Yup trying to elude his defender on the crossover, but Rainer Shine arguing for the possession here. And the officials have reversed the call, so it is going to going back to Rainer Shine. Now, I'm, I'm an assistant coach in this league, and sometimes you can get frustrated with what officials do. I think they did a great job right there. If one guy sees the play, he needs to correct the guy who didn't see it. Good piece of officiation, the officiating to discuss that. Rainer Shine will try to bring this down to single digits for the first time in the second quarter. Oh, Mercado against the tough defense. Rayback. 
James Young finds Washam. Washam lets it go. And it will count for Tony Washam. Wow, well, Mercado makes a nice challenge on the three. James Yap has given a good forward 